The following is a Joel Mahalik production. The following episode of the Joel Mahalik Show takes place between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Joel Mahalik Show. It's great that you can join us again for another week. And I was I was about to announce my name. I know I see the look on your face. <laughs> but I have new names for us. I came up with it today. What? In fact, on the way home from shopping, I came up with new names from us. What? Big 80s Joel Mahalik and sassy 70s Sharon. What do you think of do that? Do you hear the crickets? <laughs> I do hear I hear... I hear the fan, and I hear crickets, and um, Molly snoring, and that's right. all I hear. <laughs> you don't like it? Um, Sassy 70s Sharon. I like that. I just don't, I don't really care for the 80s. So. But, I, but I was big 80s Joey Mike No. back in the day. So, I mean, I'm not going to do the Joey Mike moniker <laughs> anymore, but I, I thought maybe. Well, I mean, if that's what Look, you're Look, let's just into, do it for this show, okay? okay let's okay. just do it for this particular episode, and then uh, that's it. Okay, all right. Then and, then you'll, and then you'll have to go back to the lovely Sharon. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> see? Now that piques your interest wow, a little bit. Wow, see, um, I'm ready. All right, welcome, everybody, to the show. Uh, <laughs> and I'm glad you're able to join us. Uh, if you want to join us throughout the rest of the week, do so by stopping by our internet address, www.jmtalk.net. You can subscribe to the podcast from there. You can also uh, listen to the 24-7 stream. If you're missing us between Sunday bookends, you can always listen to us there and the other offerings and news uh, as it becomes available. Like, we got some things in the works, but I just have no news to report. Anything newer than what I talked about before as far as, like, the how stuff's done. And So I really don't have any updates, but that's where they would wind up, as well as on our social channels. Right. So there you have it. And there you have it. So anyway, so here we are. So anyway, here, so here we, we are. are. And here we are. Uh, are you going to just repeat everything that I I'm say? I'm just going to repeat everything and we're you gonna, say. And we're going to do an hour like that? I'll <laughs> shut the damn thing off right now. Okay, so one anyway. the quickest way to annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> it, is the, it is one of the quickest ways to annoy me. That's right. So I want to tell, tell everybody about my, dollars, my, my trip to the dollar <gasps> store. Oh, my... <laughs> And I have a a funny after that. Okay. Uh, in correspondence with your. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so nation, if you pay attention to our uh, to the Facebook page uh, this week at JM Talk, you'll notice that I took a trip this week uh, one morning to the dollar store. This is what happened. Uh, I it, if I eat too early in the morning, mm-hmm. I can't get the lunchtime. Okay, so here's something. If you don't, here's something new. You'll you'll learn about me today. So I had come up with this plan some time ago that if I just take my breakfast to work and I eat, I get, I get to work, I get settled, you know, get all my, you know, my computer started up and all that stuff and then have breakfast, 8.30ish, something like that. I'm good to go until lunchtime. It's tough being a diabetic. You have all these rules and all these things you have to do. So I fluctuate. Mm-hmm. Sassy 70 Sharon gets me uh, these wonderful... Mini breakfast pizzas from Schwann's. Yeah. They're so delicious. They are wonderful. So I fluctuate between them and cereal with my almond milk. I'm also lactose intolerant. I'm diabetic. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm a fat ass. I'm, you know, I'm all, I have all these things. Oh, my so, goodness. So I'm also... And, and I'm none of those things except for the last one. And I'm lactose intolerant. So I instead <laughs> of... I take pills when I have to have the real stuff, like ice cream and stuff like that, but... I have found almond milk a long time ago. I, I, I put that together. My Philly makes me say that as one word, almond milk. Almond milk. Right. And uh, I usually keep a half a gallon at work and a half a gallon here. So anyway, so I take cereal today. <laughs> Today's a cereal day, and I get all set up, and I got my cereal poured in a bowl, and I go to the refrigerator, get my milk, and I realized I used the last of my almond milk <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> 
That's okay, though, because we have a Dollar General right across the street from the office. Very convenient. Yeah, very absolutely. Convenient. So I tell my assistant, I'm going to run across the street. I need milk. So I go across the street, and I'm getting my milk. And uh, luckily, they did have it. I thought... Because you did this before, I would have to get one of those small containers they keep on a shelf. I don't yeah. really like that. But since it's water-based, it's okay. There's no milk in it. Uh, yeah. But they have the refrigerated half gallons. Awesome. And I grabbed it off the uh, off the shelf. And we, as I was closing the door to the refrigerator, the sign on the shelf caught my eye. Now, you would expect to see silk almond milk. Right. $3.50. Right, and if you look on if you look on our social media, Twitter or Facebook, and you'll see the picture I took, the shelf tag obviously has enough room <laughs> to spell out silk almond milk, and right. they can even put the little R in a circle to register trademark. Yeah, no, this tag said silk nut milk. <laughs> now. Now, listen. Now, if you take the time to have the three letters N-U-T, then you could also use that same time to spell... A-L-M-O-N-D. Or Or A-L-M. A-L-M. I tweeted, and on social media, and on Facebook... You don't say tweeted on Facebook, though. You say, what do you say, Facebooked? I, I guess you say posted. Yeah, how you come, post it how on come Facebook. Twitter has a verb called tweet, but Facebook doesn't have a verb other than post? Because on Facebook, you're posting to the wall. All right. Whatever. You're not Zuckerberg. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> All right, enough of the tangent. So anyway, so I posted and tagged Dollar General uh, and said uh, I, that I can't believe that... Nut milk was the best you could come up with to describe this. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, and I did say in the tweet, no one could think to maybe abbreviate almond, A L M. Right. I told you the, that day that I would probably get a response, and I did pretty quickly. And so I did get a response from a Jeremy at Dollar General, probably in an office or whatever. Yeah. And he gave me a link of where I could make an official suggestion of this. Okay. Which I didn't do yet, but I'm contemplating making okay. an official suggestion. I mean, I, I just, I don't feel like, and, and on Facebook, one of, uh, someone on Facebook said, why are you mad at this? And I'm not mad, it's funny, and I put it out, out there as a funny anecdote. I do, find right. it, I do find it amusing. I think describing almond milk as nut milk is one step away from just tagging it as ball juice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> no, what I want to know is, what I want to know is how tiny those little attachments have to be. To milk that nut? <laughs> to to milk the <laughs> almond titties. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. That, is, that what, is that the thing you want to say in, in regards to that? Cause that the, I was, well, no, I was showing your post to uh, someone I know. Okay. And um, he was, he, he read the whole thing and said, I don't get it. What? He said, I don't get it. Wow. And he probably never will. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the thing is, this person is not lactose intolerant. So he doesn't understand the almond milk, you know, okay. thing. So but, he just didn't understand. But you don't have to be any. La- lactose intolerant or non-lactose intolerant to understand that I nut get milk. It. I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> this doesn't sound good. He just didn't understand. Because most milk comes from boobs, nipples of some sort, right? So when you call it nut milk, it, it doesn't leave much to the imagination of where no, that milk came yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you just took it in a direction that. Ugh. Dollar General took it in that direction. What? So anyway, the the point is, I I got my ball juice and had my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> that was really the point. 
Wow. <laughs> Can we end this segment, please? Wow. No, it's just, How come when I bring it's up... It's just I, gross. I, I, you know, I, I, br- I bring up uh, fascinating discussion worthy of the average person uh, person's enjoyment. And every time I do that, you go, can we end this segment, please? No, I do. <laughs> I think if you go back to all those segments, I've never said, can we end this segment, please? <laughs> you did on the one. Which one was it? Okay, uh, maybe once. That there was porn for everything. Like your pressure washer porn. Okay. And all you're right. like, enough yes. of this, enough of this. Yes, I did say that. Okay. So one other time did I say <laughs> enough of this. Well, I'm trying to keep I'm, I'm trying to keep everybody in mind with these uh, with these subjects. Um, and that wasn't so much as a, a, of a subject. It's just something I, I want I wanted to share. Yeah, it was a you it know, was a funny bingo thing that right happened. there. You just hit it on the head. We I invite people to come to this program to uh, to have some laughter and some fun. Sure. So yeah. And I'm just being myself. <laughs> so, listen, uh, I, I, I want to take you now to West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. Okay, in West Palm Beach, Florida. And how are we getting to West Palm Beach, We're going to go in our mind. <gasps> oh, Welcome yay, to, to fun. This, this is the theater of the mind. Okay. <laughs> so, welcome to West Palm Beach, Florida. Officials in West Palm Beach are hoping that Playing a continuous loop of children's songs throughout the night will keep homeless people from sleeping on the patio of a city-owned rental banquet facility. It, get, it gets better. Sassy 70s. Uh, <laughs> West Palm Beach Parks and Recreation Director Leah Rockwell tells Palm Beach Post they're trying to discourage people from sleeping outside the glass-walled waterfront lake pavilion, which she says rakes in 240,000 plus annually from events. The loop of Baby Shark and Raining Tacos? Never I, heard of Raining Tacos. Okay, I, 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 I was going to say to the audience, official sidebar. Being that you know Baby Shark, you don't know Raining Tacos? I do not. I guess I, I, I need to find out. Really? Because I do know Baby Shark. Well, we know Baby, Baby Shark. Shark, and I know it because of my grandson. We know Baby Shark very well. So, give me one second here. We're going to find out about this random tacos here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I guess I'm going to learn about it a lot sooner. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's working. I hope. Hello? Hello, Renee. Hi. Hi. It's you your, have to tell her. It's your dad. Can you can you be any more excited than hey? Hi. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay, look, you're on the podcast. And oh I, no. And I have a question for you. What's up? We are, we we just sidebarred a story uh, that talks about the song Baby Shark and a song called Rain and Tacos. Are you familiar with this song? No. <gasps> Wait a minute. See? You are the mother of my almost <laughs> three-year-old grandson, and you don't know Rain and Tacos? No, I don't. Well, we don't either. <laughs> we were depending we, on you. We, 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 we were calling in an expert. We were phoning in an expert. <laughs> my son is into real music. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Are you at work? No, I'm at home watching Love Island. Wow, she, <laughs> she's saying this on the podcast. Now I'm home watching Love Island. Uh. All right, well, I'm not going to hold you up from Love Island because I had to get on before Big Brother, but you didn't hear that. All right. Bye, we love you. Bye, love you. <laughs> All right, so we still don't know what Rain and Tacos is. Okay, no big deal. Uh, but <laughs> so back to the story. So um, these two songs is what they want to play through loudspeakers, or, or they intend to play, uh, and they're hoping that it would... Um, temporarily fix the homeless problem. Like shooing them away exactly. instead of giving them homes to sleep in at night. Or additional shelters. That it, Let's and, just play annoying music right. and get rid of them. And, 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 that, and that was my point. My, my point was, how, first of all, this is a real crappy temporary fix. Yeah. Um, because 
I don't know if I if I were homeless and trying to get some sleep, and, and all I hear is Baby Shark. I guarantee you, it's going to probably turn me violent. Right. <laughs> so now you have violent homeless people on your ass. Wow. But I have an idea. Why don't you look at some possibilities, including some of the federal funding that every city and state gets, and maybe put some sort of, say, a permanent fix on the homeless problem? Exactly. Just thinking out loud here outside the box. You're just spitballing. Yeah, it might be a better idea. Help the homeless. Don't drive them away. Right. Or, you know, drive them away <laughs> into... Listen, I even did a blog, an op-ed, on... Ways to Solve Homelessness in America. A couple years ago on my blog, which you can get to on the website. And I talked about uh, recycling the containers. We, you know, we've seen right. the container homes. Yeah. Uh, some, some cities are developing container cities. It can be done. Right. You know, very cheaply. And for a lot less money than other things that you throw uh, local and federal dollars at. No, instead, let's torture our homeless. And that would be torture. I'm, I'm telling you, I would wake up. I would want to piss in somebody's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when when Victor Jr. comes here, love him to death. But I got to listen to that song a million times. Monkeys jumping off the bed a half a million times. <laughs> or we could get to play it for us. But... Jumping tacos but off the bed or something? A L E X A is not close enough. Like I was able to. Oh, you saw what yeah. I do with the phone, right? That was some. That the, the the measurement on that was pretty good. Cool. That call is going to sound good. Yeah. I'm sorry. I had a sidebar. I had to pat myself <laughs> on the back. <laughs> right. But we could in, yeah. f- in future episodes. That's a great idea. Um, and I'm going to make a note of that. Okay. But um, but these. Uh, there are cities that are taking these recycling containers and they're actually making small villages for homeless out of it. Yeah. And, and in my article, I described how you can do it in a sustainable way, how you can make them uh, uh, self-sustainable as far as um, geothermal, um, solar panels, things right. like that. Right. These little places, they're about the you know, when you're all said and done, you can make it about the size of like a, a, a hotel room. Right. But if you're homeless, what do you need? You have a little kitchenette, you have a bathroom, you can clean up a bed, you know what I mean, a table. Right. And you are no longer, what's that word? Homeless. Right, you're no longer sleeping in a van down by the river. Right. Mm. Or in uh, in the doorway of some city building getting tortured. We're baby shark. We're raining talkers. Right. <laughs> we, I'm sorry, I, 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 don't, I can't believe I'm going to say this, sassy. But we have got to find out what that's all about. Yeah, we you have know to. I will. We'll call and, it research for the show. Okay, and I'll do the research during our break. <laughs> Wonderful. How about that? Uh, as lo- only as long as you give me a frying pan so I can hit myself with repeatedly in the face. <laughs> okay. So, so we will do that. Um. Later on in the show, we have uh, another Wombat of the Week, so you don't want to miss that. We also are honoring some heroes tonight, as we always do on each and every podcast. And one last thing, which I may do the one last thing, like I did last time, as a video extra, because it actually was pretty popular. Oh, yeah? Did you even know I did it? No. You have to. You need to go to Facebook, at JM Talk, <gasps> and check it out. Oh, my God, I will. Yeah. Okay. My one last thing I couldn't squeeze and done is I get back uh, during the weekend, um, uh, and it was about the heat wave. Oh, okay. Yeah, one last thing. Just one last thing. That's all it is. Is that what it's called? It's called one, one last, last thing. thing. Okay. Uh, um, so we'll be back after this with more Joe Mahalik Show. This is New York Super Oldie Station, 920 WON, The Apple, Brooklyn, New York. So I use my computer every day not even sure how I get along without it, but I wasn't prepared for a virus. A Trojan, they called it. One night I'm cruising along, and the next night I can't do anything. I was afraid it was going to cost me a fortune. Boy, was I surprised. They had me back up and running the same day I called them. I really like PC Tech Rescue, and you know what? My wallet likes them too. Are you troubled by computer problems? 
PC Tech Rescue should be your very next call. Whether the problem is viruses, hardware, software, or any other issue, they can diagnose your problem and have you back up and running fast. With more than 25 years of industry experience, you can be sure you are getting dependable and affordable service. Call today, 484-429-6061, or email us at pctechrescue at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Joel Mahalik Show. I'm Joel Mahalik, and over here is the lovely Sharon, Sassy 70s Hi. style. Uh, so we're glad you came back or hung around or whichever it is. Or maybe you just tuned in. But uh, during the break, we found out uh, all about this rain and taco. And it's not... Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, it's I'm, nothing I'm, like... I'll say this as somebody that can't stand Baby Shark. It's not as good as Baby Shark. It doesn't have the same... Yeah. Zip and zing is baby shark, right? Um, and and maybe most parents would agree that it, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why our expert never heard of it. Maybe, and that might also be why West Palm Beach is blaring the sound system. <laughs> it would make you run, I think. <laughs> I, well, it would certainly make me run. <laughs> so we heard it. Do yourselves a favor. Don't listen to it, right? okay? And if, oh, my goodness. And if you're a parent that knows it and has heard it, we're very sorry for you. <laughs> right. So, anyway, I, um, I, I came across a story, and it was in my uh, saved file, um, as you may or may not know out there in listener land. Uh, as I come across interesting things that I want to talk to you about on the show, uh, they wind up in a save bank on my social networks. Right. And this particular thing, this uh, this piqued my interest because... Uh, I work with a fellow who is from El Salvador. He lived in Costa Rica, and he uh, uh, he still follows a lot of the geopolitical stuff that goes on down there, and um, and they're doing great things in those countries. Yeah. In, uh, for instance, Costa Rica has banned styrofoam. Now, let's get one thing straight before we get into the story. It's very hard for a country to actually ban 100% ban styrofoam because if you are in costa rica and you order a tv from amazon it's coming in styrofoam i mean they're not yeah. they're not going to pack it in peanut butter because yeah it's banned peanut in that country. butter doesn't doesn't protect your tv and then it gets all sticky maybe all enough of it will but TV. wow what a mess that'll be opening that box right huh? and then, and then, <laughs> well you put molly to work on it right. <laughs> open a box and say, yeah. molly clear this out <laughs> <laughs> Clean the TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so just making that sidebar about you know it it it's not a hundred percent. It can't be. However, right. Uh, Costa Rica has rolled out many revolutionary env- environmental p- policies in the last decade, making them a leader in fighting climate change and pollution. In 2010, Costa Rica pledged to become the world's first carbon neutral country by the year 2021. And as of 2018, 73.8% of Costa Rica's electricity was generated through hydroelectric plants, while the remaining energy was sourced from wind, geothermal, biomass, and solar energy. That's impressive. Yeah. The United Nations Global Goals calls on countries to create sustainable economies and protect the environment, and Costa Rica is surely leading the way. Uh, so after rolling out a national strategy to drastically reduce plastic use by 2021 last year, Costa Rica is now taking its environmental protection efforts a step farther by banning the use of styrofoam containers. The new legislation, this was signed last month, I'm sorry, it was signed in June, I forgot we were in August already. I know. Uh, prohibits the import, marketing, and distribution of poly, uh, polystyrene containers, commonly referred to as styrofoam, throughout the country. Uh, the legislation will go into effect in 24 months after it's officially published in a government newsletter. And the legislation is now awaiting President Carlos Alvarado's signature and then will be sent to the National Printer for publication. Uh, fines and violations range from 763 American dollars which, by the way, in Costa Rica, the, mon- the monetary unit is called the Cologne. And it's oh, 400, wow. 446,200 Cologne. Uh, to 7,629 American dollars, or 4.46 million Cologne. Hmm. The government is required to aid companies in adapting to environmentally friendly containers before the law is fully enforced. You know, this is a pretty bold initiative for any country. Yeah. 
And now Costa Rica is a smaller country, and it's probably and it is, and somewhat it's easier. Doing so much, right? And and it's probably because of its size, it's easier to put some of these things into practice, right? And make that practice work. But they're definitely leading the way and making a footprint or a model, if you will, uh, that other countries can should, uh, follow. should follow. Right. You know, yeah. um, uh, they're, I, 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 I'm, it's slipping my mind what we talked about a couple of weeks ago that I brought up and I said, why is this just not a thing everywhere and why just this one city? Uh, you know, the, the, there's just a lot of things that we should be doing. I don't know why the United States doesn't use more wind. I don't know why we don't have more wind farms. I mean, right. we can put wind farms off the coast and get wind forever. Exactly. Um, imagine the electricity that can be generated by hurricanes. <laughs> as <laughs> oh, it goes my, by. right? Um, you know, solar. I mean, I guess we, I don't know what the percentages are. I guess we're we're using a somewhat a, a decent piece of solar. I know in, what, the last five or ten years, the government had uh, some subsidies for you if you did put solar on your house. Right. And you got some kickbacks, and that's all over now, but... I imagine, if you will, that a lot of people took advantage of that and did that and probably mm-hmm. up the percentage of people using solar. Right. Um, but uh, lately, I love reading stories about cities or towns or municipalities or small countries or big countries right. doing things like this to help the environment, mm-hmm. especially after we had Tara on two weeks ago and finding out how this soon-to-be 13-year-old is so... And her mind is so in touch with what is going on negatively with the environment. Right. Well, yeah, the impact that um, us adults are having on the environment, leaving our children and grandchildren to pick up the pieces. Right. But you know what? Every generation has said that. That's true. Every generation has said, we need to stop screwing up the earth so that our children are, and our children's children, children's children yeah. don't have to fix our problems. They've said it every generation, and nobody has learned right. how to fix the problem. Well, remember what George Bernard Shaw said. He said that the only thing that we've learned from history is that we've learned nothing from history. Exactly. So we're we're bound to repeat ourselves. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and, of course, each generation, I think if we went back and looked at every generation that said that, mm-hmm. you know, uh, each generation has made it worse and worse and worse. I yeah. mean, if you look at pollution now compared to even when we were kids and you brought up the, the Indian with the teardrop, you know, yeah. uh, sometime ago yeah. we, when we talked on the show. And, you know, because that was the mentality. You know, when we grew up, it was um, it, it, it was you just didn't do it. Exactly. Because, because it made people sad, it made people angry, and that people don't care now what anything they makes don't. you feel. Yeah. You know, we talk about this almost all the time on a show, and it gets on my nerves that we have to keep talking about stories in society right. about people that don't exactly. care, they don't drive properly, they pollute. You know, we take we we walk Molly when we go down to the beach. We walk her through the James Farm Ecological Farm. Yeah, James Farm Ecological Preserve. I was just going to say preserve. Take her through the woods to the beach. You know, they provide you bags for dog poop. They yeah. provide you bins to put the dog poop in. And we walk through the woods, and you'll see dozens right. of bags that are tied up and <laughs> thrown into the woods in plastic bags. Yeah. That is just... I, I can't even think of a foul uh, enough uh, word. Yeah, clean enough for radio, right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah clean yeah. enough, right, right. Uh, you know... I, I, that's part of this generation making it worse. I mean, I'm pretty sure my parents and damn sure bet money on my grandparents weren't throwing dog crap willy-nilly out into the environment. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. My grandfather... Every generation loses more and more respect. Oh, absolutely. For everyone, for everything. You know, it's it's common knowledge. Not everybody in the listener base can say this, but your grandfather, my grandfather, wore suits to clean the house, right? To mow the lawn. I mean, they wore suits. Yeah. You know, exactly. I'm not saying I'm going to mow the lawn in a suit. Times have changed. What I'm saying is that gives you a description of two generations ago. Yeah. To now. 
Right. You know, two generations from now, can you imagine when people are like, oh, look, I found a picture of your grandmother, you know, and it's, and mm-hmm. it's a slut in skimpy clothing and tattoos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that was my yeah. grandmother. There, there's your Grammy. Aren't you proud? Right. <laughs> you know, and when you look at it from that way, that's just one example. But when I give you that example, think of other things. I mean, like sometimes I think, I, you and I love listening to seventies. I like sixties. I like doo wop. I like forties. Yeah. I like eighties. You don't like eighties, right. but I like eighties. I like some eighties. You like some eighties. You'll listen to it if I'm listening to it, and I appreciate right. that. But sometimes I think to myself, what is music going to be like? In two generations. And what would they be listening listening to it on? Now, and what I'm about to say, I think, you know, uh, it qualifies for both of us. Let's say we both started out in the 8-track world of audio. Right. Yeah, radio, obviously. Yeah. 8-track, vinyl. Actually, vinyl, 8-track. Right. 8-track went to the cassette. Right. Cassettes went to the CDs. CDs went to MP3s. Right. I have an MP3 nodule in my truck, in my in my radio unit, in my truck, that is uh, less than a quarter inch long. Right. In a USB port that is currently holding 1,600 songs, and it is... One eightieth full. Wow! I could literally put uh, probably close to a million songs on this little nib, this little nub, this little knob, <laughs> and that's. I, I mean, yeah. that, that I can carry my entire library from my DJ days on that and still have room. Right. So these are the things that go through my head, and I think, what comes after MP3? What are they going to be storing music or listening to music on in two generations? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a mind-blowing uh, little thought there. Now, you know what's mind-blown? We're, we got here from Styrofoam. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, yeah, I, you started out this discussion. I never thought it... And it, it just got <laughs> so intense. Well, this is what our discussion. This is what the old show used to be about. We used to just fly off on tangents yeah, all the but, time. Mm, but you know, we don't do this. We don't get this here. But this is good. This is great. But mm, mm, no. mm, mm. I'm just playing. I really am playing. I'm sorry. Sometimes you want, you, you want me to stop this need, topic no, too? No, no. <laughs> Sometimes you you know all the laughter is good, and you know having fun is good. But sometimes you just have to set that fun aside to talk about these serious the pro- issues. Yeah, these serious issues and right. the problems that this world is facing today. Right. So, and that's what we just did. But bringing it all back full circle, I, you know, my hat is off to Costa Rica. Like I said, absolutely. I, I'm not sure how However, they can how they can Costa ban Costa Rica. Is um, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong on this. One of the highest rated human trafficking countries. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. And if they were, they may not be now. There is. There's so much that they've done in the last decade right. to that country. You know, to clean up and 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 I mean, some of the countries in. You know, Latin America and South America are really ramping things up and turning things around. But, um, so as I said, I don't know how they get around 100% no styrofoam unless they intend, because I, as you, as you saw, I read in the story, they're talking about shipping as well. No shipping either. So unless they're going to ban shipments of electronics into the company uh, into the country and you have to go out and purchase in country so they can stop the cyber i just don't right. i don't get it every manufacturer i'm not just talking about shipping though every manufacturer that puts a big screen television into a box puts it in there with styrofoam so i'm not sure how they'll do it but i applaud them for what they're doing what did you find out okay so over to um, the news desk yeah over to the news desk <laughs> i just did a general search on costa rica and 
Um, it says here, uh, now how much I believe of it, I don't know, but it says Costa Rica has a very low crime rate. Violent crime is rare and guns are, in fact, illegal in Costa Rica. Hmm, interesting. That's probably yeah. true because you read it on the internet, so it has to be true. It is, yes. Right. It so is. It yeah. has to be true. It has to be. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I don't know where I saw. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. One of the biggest killers of radio is silence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, right. Um, uh, oh, thank you. We heard from the peanut gallery. Right. I don't know if that came up here, but Molly is snoring under the table. Um, so real quick, just a little local john for our local listeners. The Wawa is coming <gasps> along. Oh, my God. The polls went up for the... For the gas uh, pumps. Gas Actually, pumps. this morning we saw the poles up that would hold the canopy of the yeah, gas pumps. Yeah. And then this afternoon, coming home, the canopy, the canopy was starter. Up. Yeah, the can yeah. the canopy frame was up. I mean, they are hauling tail on that now, which is fine by me, because I guarantee you, I will be hitting the penny jug to stop every morning on the I'm way ready? to work <laughs> and get a. 77 and a half ounce Wawa coffee. And for those of you listening out there in uh, Joe Mahalik Nation that don't know what a Wawa is, I am so sorry you don't. And when this one opens, I will celebrate to you by slurping a 24 ounce coffee on the air. Abs and so will I. <laughs> That's all you hear is slurping on the show. You won't know if we're kissing or having coffee. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're excited about that. This, Absolutely. This, this Wawa, folks, is we, we could walk there if we wanted to. Yeah, it's, we should. It's probably, I mean, from the door to the Wawa, probably about a little less than a mile, maybe? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, and, and about so, a half a mile, I no, would say. I'm thinking it's a half a mile from the community entrance to the light, is what I'm thinking. Okay. So you got to figure, I think we're... I think from the community entrance to the door of the house, I think we're better than a half a mile. No, I don't think so. However, With that is something that we need to um, check out and see. Right. Because in the shape I'm in, and round is a shape, uh, I would walk all the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> to get my coffee, and I'll be checking out at the counter. <gasps> I know, right? <laughs> and you don't have breathing problems. Imagine me. So we're excited about that. Yes. And so, if, if very excited about if that. If you're a local listener, uh, the Wawa in Bear and Kirkwood actually is uh, is, at is making and is making progress. Absolutely. So there. Um, okay, so I guess. Ms. Sharon is leaving. I am leaving. And then I will come back after the break. I have uh, new Honor Thy Heroes, new Wombat of the Week. And, um, you know, in some respect, I'm hoping I don't get to one last thing so I can do yeah. it on video. Because right. I think uh, ever since I did those Facebook Live broadcasts last year, I think people miss it. Right. So I know I can't convince you to get on to camera and that's fine oh hell no so i'll do the le one last <laughs> thing myself sorry people <laughs> but anyway uh, we will be back with the final stretch of the joel mahalik show after this this message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat and apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable but how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel freaky right well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Broadcasting from a crummy little studio in Baltimore, Maryland. This is Reality One Radio. You see why we need your donations?
Welcome back, folks, to the Joel Mahalik Show. It's the final stretch of the show. I welcome you back through the doorway of the Internet. Thanks for listening to our rant. Uh, so this is what we call the, the home stretch, the third stretch, the third leg, the final part of the show, if you will, containing two very important elements, uh, sometimes three. But uh, So we'll be doing our Wombat of the Week and our Honor Thy Heroes and how you can participate in both simply through the internet with an email or a stop by our social media outlets. Um, so, but first I wanted to just uh, briefly say that this week, uh, uh, on Wednesday the 7th, the 7th of August each year, is known as Purple Heart Day. And it is the, uh, uh, it, it's not a public holiday, uh, so businesses are usually open. Uh, but it's a holiday that encourages people to pay their respects to fallen soldiers, listen to their stories uh, from veterans and soldiers, thank them for their service to the nation. Uh, the Purple Heart, which was created on August 7th, 1782, by the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, George Washington, uh, then known as the Badge of Military Merit, and it was awarded to three revolutionary soldiers in 1783. Bit of history for you. Uh, after the end of the uh, Revolutionary War, no medals were awarded again until 1932, and that's when the medal was revived on the bicentennial anniversary of George Washington's birth. And uh, at the current estimate says that approximately 1.8 million people have received Purple Hearts. Or actually, I should say, to be exact, 1.8 million Purple Hearts have been awarded uh, because there are probably cases where some people have received more than one Purple Heart. So uh, this would be a good time to say, hey, listen, um, you know, thank the veteran, thank a veteran, veteran, wounded veterans, but we should be thanking all veterans, right, for their service to the country and for fighting to keep our freedoms alive. Uh, and this is just another opportunity. And I didn't want this podcast this week to go by without you knowing those facts. So there you have it. Um, so at some point this week, or after hearing this podcast, if you did not know that, now you know a piece of history. And I encourage you to go out and thank a veteran. I have said it before, though. I think we should be thanking veterans every day, all day, all year. I think it's important to them that they know that we appreciate what they do. And, uh, and so there's my, there's my take on that. Now, um, next we're going to move into the Wombat of the Week. Now, the Wombat of the Week, if you're new to the program, is our celebration of stupid people doing stupid things. And you can get involved, too, because all you need to do if you want to get involved with, with the podcast in some way is you can send a news story of stupid people doing stupid things to us at joelmaholicradio at gmail.com. Now, if Sharon was still here uh, on the broadcast, she would say, tell them how to spell your name. So it would be Joel Mahalik, M-I-C-H-A-L-E-C, radio, joelmaholicradio at gmail.com. Send that story in, and it could possibly be heard on the air. I would say it would most likely be heard on the air because sometimes we get a slight backlog, and the Wombats of the Week are are saved and then they're used at a later time. So uh, this week on our, for our, our, this week, this week, yes, on the podcast, for our Wombat of the Week, we direct our attention to uh, Tacoma, Washington, where a woman was sent to the hospital after posing for a selfie with an octopus on her face. Yes, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, so when Jamie uh, Biseglia met up with some fishermen who had hooked an octopus during a fishing derby in Tacoma Narrows uh, just this past week, she saw an opportunity for an unusual picture. It was a photo contest in the derby, so crazy me, she says. Hindsight now, looking back, I probably made a big mistake. She put the octopus on her face and posed, and at first it grabbed, it grabbed with her it grabbed at her with its suckers, and then it did something she didn't expect. It bit her on the face. <laughs> so, um, it had uh, it had barreled its beak, 
into my chin, she says. And then it let go a little bit and did it again. It was a really intense pain when it went inside and it just bled, dripping blood for a very long time. Biseglia said that the octopus was a smaller juvenile version of a giant Pacific octopus, although a spokeswoman at the Point, Def- uh, the Point Defiance Aquarium says it could have been a Pacific red octopus. Both have powerful beaks used to break and eat crabs, clams, and mussels. And their bite contains a poisonous venom, 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 <laughs> that immobilizes their prey. Biseglia says that the venom left uh, her in incredible pain, but... As owner of South Sound Salmon Sisters, she kept fishing for two more days before she finally went to the emergency room. She says that she she is still in pain. She's on three different antibiotics. This can come, it can come and go, the swelling for months they, they have told her. So now she knows it wasn't a good idea. And it's never a good idea to mess with mother nature now some of you may be old enough to, to remember that reference that i just made um it's never nice to mess with mother nature or something to that effect and I, if i'm not mistaken it was a butter or a margarine commercial uh back when i was a child but uh if you know what that is maybe hey send me an email joel radio at gmail.com or post on our facebook at jm talking and remind me refresh my memory of what exactly that was from but, um, you know, so, you, yeah, you don't mess with nature. You know, you got to be careful when you when you put a creature that's not typically, you know, hanging out with humans and, and on your face. Yeah, okay, that makes a great picture, but then look what happened. And she waited a couple days thinking that it would be okay before she found out it wasn't. And just to relate a quick story, uh, back when I was uh, in uh, uh, a, a, a much younger wee lad... Uh, I had I was fishing, uh, saltwater fishing, and I was trying to bait a hook. It was windy day. My my hook was rusty. Most of my saltwater equipment back then was, was rusty from the saltwater, and the wind kind of blew the hook out of my hand and it swung back and it jabbed me in my middle finger of my left hand, uh, you know where, in the inside of the knuckle, and I was like, ow, you know, ow. Of course, you say ow, and I pulled it out. And I just, I kind of ran over to the bank of the water of the salt water because you know when we were kids our parents said oh you got to cut go wash it off in the salt water and I washed it off in the salt water and I wrapped it in a band aid and I thought nothing of it until three days later when I couldn't move my hand anymore and it turned out it was septicemia so you have to make sure you ch- you check these things out uh, but I guess you know I think I was twenty five or twenty six at the time you know. Uh, and we're all brave back then, right? You know, I, 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 my finger came off. I don't know. Give me some electrical tape. No, I'll put it back on. You know, worry about it later on. You got to go on fishing. So, uh, <laughs> so another fishing tail, uh, 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 likely for that. But um, so she learned the hard way, and unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends on how you look at it. You know, uh, maybe it's a fortunate sense because be, because of her actions. She becomes our wombat of the week. So I don't know if that's exciting for her. If it's not exciting for her, um, but um, if if you happen to listen, Jamie Biseglia, you're the wombat of the week. Keep the octopuses away from your face and 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 other marine life that you know that you, I mean you know, I mean to me that's like the equivalent of putting a shark up against your face to take a selfie with a shark. I don't know, maybe it's dead, and then it's not. <laughs> so, um, so get those stories in. Uh, that's how you participate. You can email them to us, and um, you know we take all comers. I mean, you know we'll look at all of them and see if it meets the criteria for one by the week. It does not listen. It does not take much for a story to qualify for one bad of the week. It absolutely does not take much. So, um, uh, but as much as, as as much and as many as they are out there. As far as the eye can see, uh, sometimes there are weeks where it's difficult to find a good, a good one, you know, because not everyone that you think is actually m- makes a really good wombat story. So um, now we do this other thing where we honor uh, everyday heroes, and the segment is called, and so you can find it on uh, on Twitter in the Twitterverse uh, under hashtag Honor Thy Heroes. 
Uh, and that's uh, not only hashtag Honor Thy Heroes, but the title of the segment is Honor Thy Heroes. And uh, this is my favorite segment to do because uh, we've actually expanded beyond first responders and such uh, recently. And now we cover pretty much uh, any and all everyday heroes uh, because there's so many among us uh, that we don't know about and don't get the uh, uh, the the notoriety, if you will, in, in, in the news. And, and they should. And especially in days like these that we're going through, um, we, we need more and more of these kinds of stories. And I'm very happy to be here and, and give those stories to you, uh, uh, to give these people uh, the limelight. And many of them don't believe that they uh, they are heroes. They, they just believe that they're doing what any other uh, you know human being would do. Well, you know, in some cases, unfortunately, other human beings would, would not uh, do those things. Or, or maybe in some cases, other human beings cannot do the things that you did. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I certainly, I, I know my limitations, I think. And um, so you, you have to look at those factors. So when, when you do something uh, really special like that, that garners you to be considered a hero in other people's eyes. There's there's a reason for that, and, uh, and there's different reasons for that. And everybody maybe has their own reasons for that. But uh, you should you should wear that honor as, like a badge on your sleeve, if you will. Uh, so and now you can send those stories to Joel Mahalik Radio as well. Uh, one of the things that is not easy for us to do here on the show is when we're looking for everyday heroes, yeah, there's a lot of local newspapers out there that uh, are, are just uh, are very local. Um, uh, for a, a great example, uh, the, Cape, uh, the Cape May County Herald, I think it was, it was called. We lived there for a long time, and, and uh, I, I think it was called the Cape May County Herald. Things like that, uh, little newspapers like that, uh, you know, that, that have a, a once-a-week distribution, uh, you know. These are the kinds of newspapers that have these kinds of stories that I would like to get my hands on, but it's difficult. And that's why I need you. I, that's why I need you, Nation, the listeners, to uh, send me links to these stories of some everyday heroes from your, munici- from your local municipalities. Uh, that's what I need. So uh, this week, we have an everyday hero. Uh, a New York City sanitation worker being hailed a hero for preventing a woman from jumping off the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Uh, officials are saying that 32-year-old Timothy Moore was Staten Island bound on the upper level of the bridge at 12.45 a.m. And this happened um, uh, 12.45 Monday. This happened uh, the end of July uh, last week when he saw uh, a woman walking along the bridge. Uh, Moore, a three-year veteran of New York's strongest who lives in Staten Island, said he saw a woman speed walking and he called 911. Uh, then I asked a woman if everything was all right. Uh, don't do anything crazy, I said to her. She said she had a right to do what she wanted to. Uh, and the woman continued approaching the bridge, so Moore tried to grab her. She swung her backpack at me. I said, if you want to fight, that's okay, but you're not jumping off this bridge. And he said that he just held on to her. Uh, Moore eventually flagged down a police car, and officers helped handle the, helped to handle the woman. Uh, Moore says that I feel bad for the woman, but I'm glad that I saved her life. Um, it, it, you know, it's <clears throat> here's the thing: no one knows what other people are going through. No one knows what troubles and complications. And maybe sometimes you do. Maybe people talk to friends and they say that. But I think for the most part, I think you really don't know. Uh, like he said, I mean, basically he saw a woman speed walking. How he made the connecting determination that she uh, may have been suicidal, I don't know. But for her sake, I'm glad that he did. He made that decision and uh, you know, or, or had that uh, initial inkling because how would you know that? I mean, as I, as I go through life daily, and uh, Sharon and I were sort of the same way, we, you know, we kind of approach it like, you know, uh, be kind to others. I mean, because that, that's, you know, isn't that the way it should be? Be doing to others as, as you would like them to do to you. Be kind to others as you would like them to be kind to you. We hold, when we're at like Walmarts or, or different stores, we hold doors for people. In fact, the other day I was holding a door for somebody, then someone else came and someone else came. And Sharon was already like getting into the car and I had to stop. And I went, I said, if I didn't stop, I was going to wind up being the second shift doorman at the Wawa. You know, this is just, this is what we do. And I don't think, 
I don't think people realize that, you know, uh, uh, one time somebody asked me, why do you, why do you say hi to everybody? Why are you waving to people you pass in the car? You say hi to everybody. Well, why not? I mean, you don't know what's going through somebody's head. What if a simple hello to somebody, just that one simple hello, hey, how you doing? The simple act of holding the door, showing a bit of kindness, is a, you know, you don't know what that person is going through. And maybe that person's having a really bad week. Maybe that person is headed for the proverbial bridge, as this woman did. And you don't know the impact that you might have made by holding that door for somebody, saying, hey, have a great day to, to a cashier, you know? And you may have impacted somebody's life in such a positive way. <clears throat> and that's what this man did here. So it also brings up another subject that I don't think comes up enough, but there's a perfect time to bring it up uh, during this this piece. Uh, if you're struggling with thoughts of suicide or worried about a friend or a loved one who is, help is available. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Uh, one more time, in all numerical form, 1-800-273-8255. You can also text the word TALK to 741-741 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And you can visit them for free confidential emotional support 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Even if it feels like you are not alone. If you, know, if you feel alone, you can call these people. And they're not charging you. They're not asking you for a credit card to do this. But help is available. You don't have to be alone. You know? But for the but for those who, who don't need, you know, the next time you're at a grocery store or whatever kind of store or anywhere, hold the door for somebody. Say hi. Say have a great day. You know? Listen, <laughs> folks, I had a really crappy week last week. But I did a lot of door holding and said a lot of hellos and have a nice days. Because it's important. It's important that we make these changes. And it might help someone else. We can do something so simple like that. And suddenly we all become everyday heroes. Wouldn't that be great? And just something to think about. Also, the other thing I want you to think about is while you're out and about and having fun with your family and friends, whether it be a park or beach, I don't care, the bar, outside the bar, I don't care, on a city street, pick up three pieces of trash, would you, and throw it out, okay? Make America beautiful again. MABA. <laughs> I guess, I guess, because you got the MAGA hats, that'll be MABA. Make America beautiful again. Uh, pick up three pieces of trash, please help uh, clean up this environment uh, and uh, as, as always I want to thank you for listening to the podcast my one last thing segment uh, will be a video one last thing and I'll release it uh, sometime during the weekend I think last time I released it uh, was it after the podcast I, you know I don't remember but it really doesn't matter but I think I did I think it was after we dropped the podcast so one last thing coming to you again as a video one last thing look for that uh, during the course of the weekend after you hear this shortly after you listen to this uh, and if you wait till Monday or beyond to listen to the podcast and it will be ready for you on Facebook at that time meanwhile be good to yourselves be good to one another and we'll catch you next time here on the Joe Mahalik Show goodbye all goodbye <laughs> all